Hello, today we are going to talk about the unsupervised machine learning method called as hierarchical clustering. As you all know, complex patterns in a large data set are hard to find manually. These types of data show non-linear dependencies and contain noise that make, makes it hard to find statistically significant differences. That's why we turn to automated learning also known as machine learning. This is when we train an algorithm or a machine to perform tasks with data looking for patterns. Machine learning can be separated in two main categories of methods, unsupervised machine learning and supervised machine learning. The unsupervised machine learning focuses on detection of patterns in data. The main idea is to separate data into defined groups or clusters. Oftentimes, we can explore the relationship between the defined clusters and known phenotypes to interpret the biological association of samples in a cluster. Now that the concept is clear, let's try to run several clustering methods and see how they work. To run clustering on tBioInfo platform, you will need to upload the data of expression that we generated from processing the cell line data in the last video. This data can be downloaded directly from the lesson as well, that is, that is lesson number 13 in the transcriptomics course on the learn.omics logic portal. Clustering methods are located under the data mining section on the tbioinfo server. The tbioinfo platform has several types of clustering methods. P-clustering for big data, hierarchical clustering, K-means, spec and dbscan. In this course, we, ex we will explore hierarchical and k-means clustering, both of which are widely used for analysis of RNA-seq data. Let's run hierarchical clustering to see the analysis output for the breast cancer cell line data. The basic bottom-up hierarchical clustering algorithm is the edge cluster module. As in the other methods we have been using in the course, navigate to the data mining unsupervised analysis area, then select file upload and use the first button to directly upload your file. Start your pipeline and choose edge cluster from the list of available clustering algorithms. There are a number of parameters that you can modify. Let's take a look at those and explain what they mean. The first option is linkage that indicates which approach is to be used when calculating the possible distance between points belonging to different clusters. For example, single finds the minimum possible distance, while complete find the maximum possible distance. Mean, also referred to as average, sums up distances between all points found between different clusters and takes the mean average and centroid finds the distance between centroids of each cluster. Distance indicates the mean by which distance is determined. A few options are described here we will select ward D2. Clusters expected count number of expected clusters based on previous knowledge. In our case, we know that we have four different sample subtypes in our data based on the run table or two groups from running the principal component analysis. Do transpose. If you set do transpose to false, rows and columns that is genes and samples will be switched and you will be clustering genes. Now we can just end the pipeline. Give it an original and descriptive name and then run the pipeline. As previously, you may click on my pipelines and check the status of your pipeline. Once it is finished, you can click on the name of your pipeline to see the list of folders and click the download pipeline to view your results. You will get a dendrogram in your results. Now, how do you analyze a dendrogram or study a dendrogram and also a PCA scatter plot that are the results of a hierarchical clustering pipeline, you may visit lesson number 13 under the transcriptomics course on the omics logic portal, which explains each and every step very well and discusses in further detail about the analysis of the result.